Hello there guys and welcome to my channel. My name is Intuitioner and today we're diving into the best ways to improve your gameplay and withering waves. Whether you're looking to optimize your progression, gather resources efficiently, or just enjoy the game to the fullest. No worries, I've got you covered. But before we get started, if you are new here to my YouTube channels, make sure to click the subscribe button so you can be updated on my latest uploads. So without further ado, let's get started. First, let's discuss the stamina system which is called the wave plate. So basically, the wave plate is used daily to obtain leveling up materials for characters, weapon, skills, and echoes. We have four categories where you can spend your wave plates. Number one is the forgery challenge where you can get leveling materials for your skills, ascend materials for your weapon, and your character. Second is simulation field which provides you leveling materials for your resonator and for the weapons. The third category is the boss challenge which can provide you with material to ascend your character, leveling materials for your character and for your weapons though not as plentiful as those available in the simulation field. The final category is the tacit field cleanup where you can obtain new echoes, level up materials for your echo and materials to tune your echo sub stats. Now that we understand the four categories where we can spend our stamina, let's talk about where it would be best to use all of our stamina. On the early stage, I highly recommend spending your stamina on the forgery challenge. This allows you to quickly level up your skills and ascend your weapon by enhancing your character skills level. You'll be able to defeat monster rapidly and efficiently and increase your data bank. I don't really recommend spending your wave plates in the simulation field as the experience can also be gained by grinding open world mobs and from the chest. I don't recommend spending your wave plates on the tacit full cleanup. The main reason is that we want to save wave plates for beneficial use in the early stage, such as leveling up skills, weapon, using them in tacit won't be worth it because the level of echoes you obtain is still low. Next tip is kill all the monsters you encounter. So farm echoes for data bank leveling. So defeating monster in the field provides an opportunity to collect echoes though it's only 20% chance. But this is crucial for leveling up your data bank. The data bank is essential for unlocking various bonuses, abilities, and enhancement for your characters. So by consistently defeating monsters and absorbing their echoes, you can quickly level up your data bank and gain access to more power powerful upgrades. And just a reminder, achieving level 15 in your data bank grants you access to tier 5 echoes, the highest rarity level available in this game. So tier 5 echoes are incredibly valuable as they offer powerful bonuses, enhancement, and abilities for your character. As I mentioned earlier, once we reach level 15, the rarity level increase, providing us with better chance of obtaining higher tier echoes. As you can see here in my echo gallery, the higher the tier level of my echoes, the more experience I gain. Additionally, the higher the data bank level, the higher the drop rate percentage we receive. So it's always a must to defeat every echo you encounter in the field. Next tip is to enhance your target precision. There's one feature in this game that I really like, like you can lock the camera onto your target by using your mouse scroll. It allows you to be more precise in terms of targeting, especially in the fast-paced combat situation. It also minimizes the risk of losing sight of your target on the amiss chaotic battles, ensuring you maintain your focus on your intended enemy. Next tip is make sure to complete your guidebook tasks, daily reward tasks, and reach 100 points every day. This will reward you with Astrite, which is in-game currency used for the gacha, and it also contains union experience that unlocks additional features in the game. The primary reason for aiming to level up your union level faster is to unlock specific rewards. For instance, reaching level 45 allows you to claim a 5-star weapon of your choice while reaching level 25 grants you a free gacha spin. Next tip is make sure to loot all the plants, flowers, or any other lootable items you come across in the game. These items are essential for character progression or ascension and other upgrades similar to the data bank. 
Next tip is unlocking or activating resonance beacon or teleportation device across different areas of the game map. Uh, this provides you with convenient access to various locations. This not only saves you time from traveling but also allows you to quickly respond uh, to quests, events, or challenges that may arise in different parts of the game world. Opening all the resonance beacons or teleportation device not only provides easy access to every location but also offers a bonus experience while navigating. Additionally, you can encounter uh, echoes along the way allowing you to level up your data bank as you progress. This ensures that you not only efficiently traverse the game world but also gain valuable experience and resources to further strengthen your character. Another tip is try re-rolling until you get a good starter or buy one from the market if you're not a heavy spender in the game. Choosing the right starter character can significantly impact your gameplay experience in watering waves. If you're adept at dodging and parrying, Gian might be the ideal choice due to his combat fronness. However, if you find yourself struggling with mechanics like dodging and parrying, choosing Verena is a great option. Uh, due to her healing abilities, she can compensate for any shortcomings in your defensive skills by keeping you sustained during battles which can be particularly helpful in challenging encounters such as boss fights. So if you are not confident in your ability to dodge or parry effectively, Berina Healing Frones can provide crucial support and help you overcome top situation in the game. Last tip is know the cost for equipping Echoes on your character. When equipping Echoes, it's important to manage the cost efficiently. Each character can have a maximum of total of cost of 12. So here's the breakdown. So Boss Echoes is equals to 4 cost. Elite Echoes is equals to 3 cost. Common Echoes is equals to 1 cost. So in a common setup or the best setup that you can use is one boss, two elites, and two commons. This ensures you are maximizing the potential of your echoes while staying within the cost limit, balancing your echoes effectively will enhance your character ability and help you progress more smoothly in the game. And again guys, thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful for you, is make sure to click the subscribe button so you can be updated on my latest uploads. And also, if you have time, uh, watch my stream here on YouTube and like the video as well. Only if you want to, of course. And again guys, see you on my next video.